and we'll call the meeting to order. Um, welcome everybody. If we have any um, changes to the agenda, Let's see we've got. Oh, it's a happy time of year budget. <laughs> Rod, you know we do. Do we have any changes? No. Anything good? Nope. Um, any public comments that aren't we're not on the agenda or anything additional? People want to tell us how nice we are and what good job we're doing. <laughs> anything like that? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, something like that, Judy. <laughs> anything like that? That'll be all right. No. <coughs> okay. Well, then let's start with the speaking of Judy with the uh, Hyde Park Community Circle. So it's not nice to do this. Why don't you come up you here? Know, you know, know, the thing is, um, Deb was just sharing with me the agenda item, which is talking about the budget, but we need discussion before that. We can, do, that's, we can discuss, we can do it all at once. Sure, come on up and introduce yourself. If y'all want to come up, come up. We're happy, we're, we're not intimidating. You can, I, I think if you come up here, you want to pull up some seats that many, whatever you want to do. Yeah, fix it up and here's it. You want to sit right there? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to sort of partially read this because okay. I have to, I forget things if I don't. So okay, let me know who I am. Yeah, yeah. That's the first right. thing. And, and, and I you? have to introduce myself too. That's right. Yeah. So, Judy Clark, and I'm one of the members of the High Park Community Circle. And uh, whoops, before she does, I'm not going to like you talk then. So, and then John, my husband's here as a member of the Hyde Park Community Circle. So, yeah. <coughs> I'm Deb Henderson. I'm the treasurer of the Hyde Park Community Circle. My husband's here just supporting me because he supports the Hyde Park Community Circle. <laughs> and yes, John Henderson. Okay. So, what's up? So, I thought what I would do, uh, how long do we have? Go. Go. No, but I mean, well, anyhow. Anyway. But five, ten minutes, you know. Oh, good. Okay, that's perfect. Um, I'm going to just kind of, for everybody's benefit, give a brief history. Sure. Where we're at now and what we're looking at, you know, for the future. So, and, and some of you may know this, or all of you, but we formed in 1999. Um, and it was a gathering of interested people as a result of dissension and unrest in Hyde Park. And we met for a couple of years in an attempt to bring the two warring factions together <laughs> and to find common ground and to no avail. And it didn't work. So, in 2001, the committee decided to offer an event to bring people together to have fun, our first ice cream social. So that was in 2001. So that event was very successful, and so the circle decided to offer an event for each season um, with the following. I'm going to read the intention. Okay. <clears throat> so the Hyde Park Community Circle is called for Hyde Park residents and friends who are interested in building community together. The circle is called so that people can think and act creatively together providing ongoing support in a cooperative spirit. And then we proceeded to put on the four events, one in the spring, Thanks Spring Puppets and Plants, in the summer, the Jedediah Hyde Ice Cream Social, in the fall, the Hyde Park Home Day, and in the winter, Hyde Park Lighting Ceremony. And the secondary result from holding these events each year over the past 20 years is that traditions have been formed for Hyde Park that people could support and enjoy. So, and we started out as an independent entity, and you guys can probably tell us when we came under the town. I, I don't remember when that happened. But now we, what do you call us? The committee that works you know, under yeah. the town. So as you're already aware of, the High Park Community Circle is made up of an aging committee. That doesn't, doesn't, doesn't include it. Doesn't include it. <laughs> so, and I have made the announcement that I'm retiring as of, of the end of the year, and many others have dropped out, cut back their commitment, or moved away. So as we didn't have enough of a workforce to fully organize the Hyde Park lighting ceremony, we decided to go ahead and have people be able to order their lights and, um, you know, get two wreaths, so that you see there's one in Hyde Park and one in North Hyde Park. 
And what happened was the guy on Paul board or whatever they're called, yep. okay, came on board and decided that they would have the ceremony or a ceremony there lighting the lights and with refreshments, which was really nice. So they took, took that over. And now we're talking with them about possibly continuing with that event each year. And it's a great fundraiser, you know. So that would be a nice way for them to raise money. <coughs> so we're approaching our spring event, Think Spring Puppets and Plants. So one of our members is working with two um, parents from Pi, Parents in Education, yep. and they're coordinating the event. And again, it's our hope that Pi will take over this event in the coming years. So there's no longer enough members of High Park Community Circle to plan and coordinate the events. And so we're looking to the town to find new direction for continuing efforts and building community. Um, so we have an idea. I want to make a proposal sure. um, to the board to co-sponsor a collaborative meeting with us to brainstorm possible ways of going forward. We would look at the four events as well as other ideas for continued community development. What do we want to do? You know, keep bringing people together in Hyde Park. Um, and we are suggesting or hoping that a meeting can be held here at the town offices. And we even have some possible dates if you guys are interested in doing this. Um, and they're in January, they're Mondays and Wednesdays, 13th, 16th, 20th, and 23rd. And we have a whole group of um, organizations, groups in Hyde Park that would maybe, you know, we would invite mm -hmm. to come to that. Um, and then the, we don't know everybody, so, you know, we would look at other people to find out who, who ought to be at that gathering. Um, anyone? So that's, got anything else? <laughs> I'm just looking at the notes that we have here. Um, we sent out a survey to Hyde Parkers in 2018, and these results could be shared. Um, the, the group that we're sort of trying to build off of, <clears throat> at least for that brainstorming session, is the community collaborative group. Um, I think Amy Olson used to, from the library, used to bring that together and she shared with us a list of people and organizations that it would make sense um, to meet with us to see what they think about um, us doing something with more people, volunteers, because we really do need more volunteers. We just don't have enough, as Judy mentioned, um, people to make the events happen. Home Day is a huge event even though it's just a short amount of time for that day, it's a huge event that we pull together. And uh, we're not able to do that with the crew that we have left. So we're hoping you'll have some ideas or will help us bring these people together um, to have that discussion, see if anybody's really interested in continuing what this community group is all about. <laughs> well, and of course, you know, we're just finishing up this Better Connections yeah. grant, which is, um, besides literally, it's also the kind of connections that you're talking about. Right. And of course, a lot of groups now connecting up with the new parent groups at the elementary school is great. And we've just, um, Several people that were working on the Better Connections grant yeah. um, said, oh, and, and again, you'll see, you'll see the report and the draft is online. Um, and it has a variety of suggestions for pop-up events and all those sorts of things. Um, and some of, the, some of the things that we talk, that we talked about during fun with the schools is um, that's where the unicorns welcoming the kids back to school. Uh, and, and so we found a, f a few people that are really into that and we're just, just literally in the past week and a half of are getting those people connected up with the new parents group in the elementary school. And again, that's the, you know, the pie. Pie, 
parents and education. And so then when you're talking about, so there's... Well, I mean, let, me, let me finish and then maybe it will take the pieces. <coughs> okay. So, so you, you know you've got the pie group, which is new, invigorated, you know, and those, those groups come and grow depending on the, on the group of parents that you have. You know, that's always different. But right now there's a really good group that's coalescing and looking, yes. at, and looking to do things. We know that you guys, as you know, up in North High Park, that crew is, you know, sort of going gangbusters. So I, I think it's a perfect time to pull as many people together as we can to say, so how do we structure? And again, the reason, the, the reason for coming underneath the town umbrella is that takes care of your insurance, which is not an insignificant issue when you want to do things on a regular basis. You know, so so it gets taken care of. But I think it's sort of perfect timing to, you know, to get people together to say, okay, we've got these great traditions, there's some more traditions that we'd like to put together. Um, just talking, and it all comes down to how many people can, how many people will step up to the plate and help do the work. That you know in the, in the wintertime, come February, um, it would be wonderful. Again, we've talked about the school's interested in, the parents, the parents group is interested in, um, doing a family movie some Saturday night, you know, at, at the school, and you can't do that without popcorn, and people have already volunteered the popcorn <laughs> boppers, and you know, all that sort of thing, but looking for, the goal would be, if it would be possible, of every month of the year, to have one thing, and sometimes it's going to be a gigantic thing, like, you know, the home days, um, or it may just be a movie at the gym that's a real family-centered, yeah. but that, the, the long-term goal is every month of the year there would be a fun thing that could, families could do in Hyde Park that's not going to cost them money. You know, to really support having Hyde Park um, develop a reputation as being a very positive, family-friendly kind of a place. Uh, and, and again, just through this better connection, it's a, it's a good time. There's just, I think there's a lot of interest, so it's a, it's a, well-timed suggestion to figure out how to get a whole group of people together um, and sit down and say, okay, here are the ideas, here are the sorts of things, how do we put together a core group um, and, and, and see what happens. And it happens or it doesn't happen. Yeah. You know. So when you're talking, two, two questions about the better connections. So that's been, has that been just a group of Interested people won't like with the select board, or how is that? No, that's it. It's been, been, a, uh, it's been a great, yeah. I know Chris Sargent, but when she's talking about no, that people that's it. Know. Well, it's people that were on that board and were involved with the group, right? right. Through the just saying, Oh, this would be interesting, oh, let's see about doing and, that. And they might be interested in continuing. I, I know some on, of them are interested are in interested. continuing. Okay. That's why we had already reached out to the school because we were thinking, you know, gee, it might be fun when the kids come back from their winter break to have some unicorns again. So, you know, we were thinking of, just because we know, how to say, if our stuff continues, we know we need to move on it. Right. Um, so we were thinking sometime in January, but you mentioned sometime in February. Well, that's what we were just talking about an event at the yeah, school. Yeah. That's not a meeting. That's oh, just not a meeting. No, 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 okay. no. This was a, this was doing a movie at the school for right. families because basketball kind of takes care of January, so you got to get through okay. basketball season, which is good because that's one thing. Some families are doing that, so you get through that, and then you kind of get to January and go. Your biggest challenge is going to get volunteers. Oh, sure. It's for everybody. That's why we're here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's why we're here, really. This last village project over there with, with the pocket art. Yeah. We had it on the front of the forum. We had it advertised. We wanted, you know, people come and give us a hand doing it. Who did it? One, two, three, four. Yeah. yeah. I wish I'd known that. I don't read them all. No, maybe that would have been a good thing we helped with. Yeah. But exactly. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. yeah. Well, but part of that, too, is figuring out how Communicate. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, we realize, yeah, the efforts going forward aren't going to necessarily look like they have, you know, that, that it can change. And yeah, as Deb was saying, you know, well, we have enough people to put on home day, and if we don't, we don't do it. We don't. Right? And, and, as, and sort of as you're saying, Susan, that we maybe look at 
doing smaller things, right. or this, right. this group of people that go forward, you know, to have something going on, you know, whatever. And maybe every other month to start that book or, you know, yeah, exactly. or whatever. Exactly. It's your long-term goal yeah. is to have, right. Yeah. Right. You know, but it, again, we do have in town, now with the Deckers, a great, you know, the Fork and Gavel. I mean, they're into looking at doing all sorts of things that, that help them as well. So, yeah. I, I, you know, there's some good energy right now, and all we can do is get people together and see what happens. So it sounds like they're willing. Okay, so the, what's, what's an, yeah. Why, so what's why, not, why, don't, why don't you send us an, an email, and if this works for everybody here, send us an email and we'll just pick a date and we'll set a, and a set meeting and you figure it out. We'll we were figure thinking out who you invite. Here. Oh yeah, you definitely, I think we'll do it here. Yeah. And we, we were thinking of a Monday evening or a Wednesday evening, and you guys, like, you meet what? Yourselves. Third Monday. Third, third Monday? Mm -hmm. Would a Monday work? Better, like, like, when's the planning? Second and third. January 6th, we got a meeting on the That's on Monday night. Don't probably Wednesday would be better. Yeah, Wednesday probably better. Wednesday's yeah. better? Yeah. Okay, good. We'll, go, we'll, you know, try to come up. Throw it a couple better. days. Yes, it yeah. sends a couple of dates and, yeah. and send it to Ron and that so you can check calendars and see if there's yeah. anything else planned. All right. Um, and we'll see about who worked with Amy and come up with a whole group of folks that would want to. Yeah, we have you know, a whole group of them. What I'll do okay. is I'll send that to you guys, and you know, you're going to know people that we've missed, you know, on their or Yeah, we'll see that. And then how, to, how to get them invited? Do we just want to send an email to everybody or people in general get on the phone mm -hmm. or just, you know, what do you well, we'll probably put it on front porch for Yeah, look at that individually happens. because some places, you know, we're not sure of a contact person, and I think that's critical. You know, like you might know somebody, you know what I mean, that's right. involved in something. So we'd, that we'd, we'd work no. on, we would right, work on that. Okay, let's start, let's get the information to Ron and we'll take it from there and <coughs> see if we can set up because yeah. it's almost the middle of January. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, seriously, and being it, and it's sort of busy, so getting on folks' schedule and it makes week plus <coughs> is probably what we need to do when it's kind of a crazy time. Anybody else got thoughts about it? Or I think the thing is, to me, is getting together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your Thank time. You. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, cemetery trustees. Yes. Okay. We have asked for an increase. Christine Cooney and myself are here. If you have any questions, um, the main reason for the increase is, uh, you know, the town now has taken over the North High Park and the Hooper Cemetery. Um, the Hooper Cemetery is definitely going to have to have a road um, that can go in and come out. They have been going in and coming out on someone else's property, which I don't know how long this was last. <laughs> um, right now it seems to be okay, but we don't think that it's really a yeah, long-term really solution. Should, should yeah. Yeah. Um, and Mark Faith has indicated that um, the way they're doing it now, with that closed off, uh, they're having trouble getting the hurts in and backing out. So there's problems. So our main objection for next spring is uh, Rapid Foss is going to lay off the road and, and hopefully that will happen. Um, how how um, big is that cemetery? How big? I mean, just about. It's good size and there's a lot of lots that are available. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas in North High Park, there is, uh, if you have, you know, a, lot, a family lot, then there's a lot for you, but um, there's no selling there. Um, there's no lots available in the center anymore, so or the village. So we focus, you know, they they have to have upkeep, which is taking care of these wonderful trees that our forefather planted many years ago that made the cemetery so pretty, which are now, um, you know, big roots and falling down and taking away those big trees. They're very expensive. Yeah. And now with North High Park, Hooper Cemetery still looks look very good. Mm -hmm. um, North High Park, I'm sure, will have to have a cleaning within a year or so. 
So there's going to be some added expenses. So what are you, six cemeteries you take care of? Yeah, yeah. And, and North High and Center is full? Yes. Well, selling lots. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. yeah. You can have, have a family of four. You can have right. lots yeah. there. But, um, no. So that is the reason for the increase. Now, how much room in the uh, St. Teresa's in? We don't have. Uh, still private. St. Teresa's is private. Oh, is that right? Catholics, yes. We do, um, we do give a portion each year, but we don't have to get it. I think that's full, too. You know. <coughs> I think it is, too. When I'm getting that, all these cemeteries are getting full, so we want to start looking for boys and land sometime along for cemetery. I hope it won't be my problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're pretty well. I mean, Cooper and Jedediah, there is quite a bit of land. Uh, I can tell you, we had to buy in 1980 up there in Jedediah, and on that side, there was only two other people. And um, now it's extended, and we're going to have to survey some more. So. Now, who, who borders the land up there, Cooper? Brian Jones? Yes. And apparently Mr. Whitaker didn't mind letting, you know, that <laughs> exit. <Yeah. laughs> Plus when they had a burial, uh, a private bed burial, um, the cars were par are parking in their haven, which is... Would it, would it would hold the town to, to, to maybe get old Brian and see if he would uh, give an easement or to sell us some, some water and land down there to, when we need it? Any thought of meeting it anytime soon? I hope not. But <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. Meeting it for the road, you mean? Well, both for the road and for additional thoughts. Yeah, I know that Robert Foss did talk to the land quote of the summer. I don't know exactly what they came up with, only that Robert feels now we need this road and not have to worry about going on somebody else's property. I can talk to Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. We'll check it with Robert. Yeah. We'll find out from him what status is and we'll call the plan from there and figure out what we need to do later on. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? That's it. We're good? Do we need more to accept that? No. No. No, we just have that. To get it all in. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I was going to say, Judy, you might see number three will be interesting, and I'm going to be in touch with you about it. Okay. If you look at our agenda. Oh, I didn't see the agenda. Okay. I recommend you look at it. <laughs> um, town listers. Uh, town listers were on to talk about. Uh, Julie Rowletter's uh, resignation. Yeah. So she is done basically the end of February. It's our town meeting day. So I think we can talk about that maybe with the other personnel stuff that yes. we have ups yeah. for upstairs <coughs> later later in the meeting. But because it's all combined with budget stuff as well as personnel, so we're not sure which, which way it's going to go. So. Okay, but we but we do know that. Well, she's really leaving this time. <laughs> okay, this is it. You know, this is uh, this is it, and that leaves a large hole in a variety yep. of issues. Yep. Okay. So we'll talk about it. Oh. Deferred. Um, <coughs> the uh, town fire department. We got the MOU update. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a couple things here that. Uh, fire department budget from Ed Webster and the fast squad information and emergency management from Brad. I can pass those up. You can pass this is from Brad.
And this is the MOU. There's extra copies of the fire department MOU if anybody would like to see that on North Hyde Park Eden Department. So quickly on the MOU, there's uh, two things that the two select boards, Eden and Hyde Park, have been going back and forth on. Uh, it's a memorandum of understanding what to do with fire trucks if the fire department were to dissolve and the joint resolution to adopt the MOU. So both boards have this draft. And Brent Lamphere from North Hyde Park has asked that the select board meet to discuss this at the fire station January 6th, which is a Monday in January. At six o'clock, if the, this board can get there, he, we gotta confirm with Eden to finish this up. It's been going back and forth a little bit. But. January 6th at 6 p.m. at the fire station? At North Hyde. Yes. <clears throat> what day? January 6th. January 6th. Six. Six. What day? 6th. And Brent said North Hyde Park would have their budget review at the same time since both boards would be together. No, no, just read it, and if you have any questions, send them to me, and I'll give you the background if there's a need for that. Okay. I think when we added to it, it had all the changes that we had talked about when we were up there the last time. Yeah, one of the changes that wasn't resolved was the insurance for trucks at actual cash value or replacement, and I think John uh, Savage got the rather large premium cost for the replacement value so yeah. our insurance is actual cash value yeah. here so i think having actual cash value is fine it does take into considered depreciation so it's not zero but yeah. somebody will it, have to it, argue it had been a question the way the first one was written should it be replaced but we're going oh yeah. it's supposed to be replaced but like, no i don't think that's no good. right yeah. so that's that was one of yeah. the other changes yeah. other than just formatting changes it, right i think you've gotten that sorted out yeah so if send any questions you got and I'll try to get okay. answers for you. On the, the Chief and Brad are here for their two budgets which just got handed out. Yep. Okay, let's start with the fan squad. <coughs> uh, no change from last year. Ron, could you refresh us <laughs> because we got into the how much money was was spent and when it needs to and what it yeah. needed to be spent and just make sure that we got that and we're all sorted out on Yeah, so any expenses that happen in current year, which is twenty, right. are Do being managed <laughs> heavily, <laughs> you know, for Brad's purposes, so that if he thinks he needs something he should send us a note. Uh, we're trying to recover some of the over expenditure from right last year so I think I think it'll be fine but we just need to track that and don't have any major expenses this year you know, the only thing I'd like to say about the past one is <coughs> and I'm not being negative and I'm not pointing fingers at anybody I'm, I'm saying this actually just financial for the town of Hyde Park is Last squad is only hitting about 50% of the calls. And, and if I look at the members, some of the members out of that 50% of the calls are only hitting five to 10 calls per quarter. So, I mean, there's a difference between a member and an active member. 
So you're up against the wall when the when the alarm goes off. It, it, according to what I see with the payroll and stuff, that you're the highest attender. It is are we looking to get new members on that can respond? Yes, yeah, but uh, one of them, Ben Collier, I just put him on. Um, there's a gentleman that just moved in at one of the elements across the Mason, or Mead Road. Um, he runs on HealthNet, and I'm trying to get him in as a member. He's a paramedic. Um, so. Okay, now my Brad, when the call goes out, when you guys do respond, when the call goes out, are you getting there before NEMS? Are you getting if it's there down in this area, but if I go to North Lake Park, they're on scene before I get there. And, and it's... And the only time I usually go to North Lake Park to make it worth it is if it's a critical call where they're going to need a hand. Okay, sometimes I hear on the scanner, dispatch, dispatch, fast squad for lift assist. Then I don't hear some dispatch the fire department for lift assist. So. That's the reason why is because it's a larger patient and what we have for help there, we can't do it safely. So you're saying you, you don't have enough members for a heavy patient? Correct. Between the ambulance and say Our ambulance, yeah, because NEMS runs two people. It's a two-person group. Mm -hmm. um, so you got two on the ambulance, and then say if George and I go, there's four of us. If it's a four or five hundred pound patient or whatever, or if it's a in a spot where it's going to be a wedged in, wedged in, or they got to come down the second floor if they're in the basement or something. Yeah, you know. It's going to take some extra hands because that's the last thing we want to do is injure ourselves. And then we got two patients now. All in the state. You know, so, yeah. you know, in some of these places we go, you know, they're not tip top shape. You know, so. You know. I, I guess the only thing I want to say is I'm, I'm a little disappointed at the percentage of calls that they make compared to the calls coming. I'll leave it at that. You know, I've got two that are been doing it for forty five years now, you know, and then I got myself and then one other guy and he's an airline pilot mm -hmm. that flies across country so it's hit and mess with him, you know, and then I got this new guy, he's already gone on four or five calls are ready for me in the North Lake Park area, you know. So that's helping bring my numbers up because a lot of the times, like I said, if it's past Longmore Hill or something, it's not worth me going up unless it's something serious, you know. And I know it's not fair to the taxpayers, but it does. It just doesn't make common sense for me to go up. Somebody's having a nosebleed or or something, you know, for me to go up there. By the time I get there, the ambulance crew is bringing them out, already and loading them in the ambulance, and I turn around and go, you know, you know, now that you guys are paying us, you know, there's no sense of me going and charging the town an hour when I even do, do nothing. Well, would, would it be worth looking for somebody up that way to be on the back end of the fast spot? I got one right now. I mean, if, if, if North Tide Park, Anybody north of uh, Longmore Hill is taxpayers paying for this. They, they ought to get some sort of service out there. You know, and one of the other hard things is um, it costs so much money. None of the services pay for the certification now. Um, you know, they're charging six, seven hundred dollars daily. It's some of them are up to that. You know, right now I'm taking my advanced EMT class down in snow. And just the loan for that was 850 bucks, and then 150 dollars for the books. You know, so you know, to ask somebody to come off the street, you know, I started my class in October, and I don't get done until April. 
you know, so I'm asking them to commit all that time and then fork out all that money. You know, we're starting to work with the state to try to see if we can start getting grants to help, like some of the, the fire services, you know, the um, fire academy will help sponsor some classes to get training for the firefighters, you know, so now EMS is coming aboard with the fire service and we're trying to work with the legislators and that to come up with some grant programs to help people pay for these classes and hopefully we can get <coughs> more volunteers, you know. Because I'm thinking down the road with all the, the industrial power up in North Hyde and, and the, and the uh, natural guard stuff in Hyde Park, that is going to be the majority of the cost. You know, the more accidents, but you know, I'm trying to say there's right. more yes. chance of an accident. Right. Okay. Well, but I think beside the accidents again, it's a lot of with an older population in town, and we Vermont has an older population. Um, the, the kinds of incidents where you know somebody may be having a heart attack, um, you know, it's not just a few little accidents. It, it's sort of health issues or people. Somebody slipping at home and dislocating the shoulder or breaking an arm or something. It's it would surprise you though. Um, you know, everybody thinks, you know, we got an older population, but I would say the call volume would probably be half, half the way between the younger generation and all that. And I can tell you, we're having a huge problem with overdoses. Well, you know. Everybody is with everything, right? Right, yeah. right. you yeah. know. Unfortunately, right. You know, so, you know, and that's the younger generation. You know, and sometimes we're going there two or three times over and over. Yeah. You know. So. No, I wish I could have 30 people. You know, yeah. my question was, Brad, it, 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 it's a, to save lives. Yeah, you know, that, that's what you guys do, and thank you for it. But if, if you could say you're getting there five minutes for MAMS, it's well worth it. Even a minute for MAMS is well worth it. But if you're getting there at the same time, right. it's it not worth it. it. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, because like if there's a call in Sterling View where I live, I'm on scene for five to eight minutes before they get there, or if it's here in the village and that, you know. <coughs> I know well, all volunteers are an issue all over the place. It's not, a, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, it's be, not just us. You know, it's yeah, be interesting to see if the legislature starts to come up with some way to help reimburse the cost. Because again, getting people to volunteer their time is one thing, but asking people to volunteer their time and sure. chip in a and thousand bucks for training is like, yeah, yeah. Their own money is definitely. Uh, <coughs> a, uh, I know when I first got into this 25 years ago, you know, the service helped us pay for it. You know, now they've gotten burned where they get somebody certified and then they just leave. Right. You know, that's what Rogers have. Yeah. The sheriff's department, prime example right there. You know, EMS is the same thing. You know, you get somebody all trained and all that. And then they take off and go somewhere else. You know, so 90% of the services said no more. Yeah, right, right, know, right. That's you have right. to do, like, them still pay for my course, but I have to do the course, pass it, and then work with them a year, and then I re reimburse my money. You know, so okay. it's two years okay. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is, it is a reimbursement, you're right. Well, and that's why those sorts of things being funded at a state level or even some of them on a national level, because once people are trained, then it doesn't matter where they go. Right. They still have the ability to help in the service. And again, yeah. and again that's where uh, the, the money coming from higher up to do those sorts of things makes a lot more sense, because they're making an investment in an individual that, with skills that are very movable and obviously really needed. It doesn't matter where you go. Yeah. You know, skills that can be put to use. So. Okay, well. 
Okay, that's the same as last year. We'll just put this one here. Okay. Um, fire department. Uh, I believe Ron gave you a copy of what we proposed for this year. It is a significant increase, but uh, we're falling behind on on costs and stuff. Everything's going up. Prime example is our electric rate and stuff. Um, so we're asking for an additional um, $8,100. I don't know what that is percentage-wise. I don't deal with the So in addition, uh, we also need to replace tires on our engine one, which is now 10 years old. And uh, NFPA standards state seven years and the DOT standard recommends 10 years. Um, and we also have to do a hydro test on all our air bottles, uh, which are now five years old. So rather than spike the budget, uh, we were asking for money out of the, uh, what, what do we call it now, the fire equipment and repair <coughs> reserve fund. Right of uh, approximately $5,700. <clears throat> uh, also starting in uh, January, we'd like to revise our current pay scale to more represent what North Lake Park is getting, um, which is on page two of the letter you have. Our pay scale runs from January January 1 to June 30th, and then July 1 to December 31st. So, let's see, for example, the Chiefs, uh, North Fight Park Chiefs currently gets $14 an hour, and I get $13.79. And with the new job descriptions that were accepted by the board that added a another rank within our, our rank structure we have now have a senior firefighter which uh, we didn't have to pay for before um, so you yeah, going to uh, pay your firefighters less this year uh, you want to pay them less? You you going down a current pay at eleven sixty seven. You want to propose it to eleven fifty? Well, we try to keep it square. The the uh, most of our guys will follow follow would follow in the uh, senior firefighter because they've been on three years. Okay. All right, as as. We have discussed before, we still would like you to consider uh, giving the officers a stipend pay for the extra work that we do. Um, this is the same thing that I proposed to you about two or three months ago or something like that. And lastly, uh, we'd like you to consider allowing us to obtain diesel fuel at the town pump uh, for, let's see. Currently, if we, when we buy at the pump, for the last four months, it's averaged between 2.36 to 2.50 uh, dollars per gallon. That's that's less the federal and state taxes and stuff. And from what I understand from Ron, you purchased your diesel this year at uh, 203. So that would that would mean anywhere from a 33 to 47 cent per gallon saving. Uh, I didn't have time to go through and try to figure out, and I really can't figure it out until I do it for the, until we go through the new year, as to what kind of saving would be. Uh, probably wouldn't be much, maybe $500 to $1,000. <coughs> Again, I tried, I tried looking at some of last year's bills, but the, their uh, their rates were down compared to what we're paying right now. 
I don't think yeah, I don't think the quantity is that much for your trucks over the course of six months or a year. I mean, we, compared to what the highway crew uses, it'd be, yeah. it's well, well, no, no, <laughs> it's not. It's not going to affect the highway crew's ability to buy fuel. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Because right. they'll. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's not like we're putting 100 gallons in every time we fill up or something like that. Right. Yeah, lots of times it's pretty infrequent. 10, 15 it's gallons to get it, get it topped yeah. off. How ask Ryan? What is the monitoring on the pump? Is there a self log or is there a digital printout or is it just a clicker or none? Just, a, just the old fashioned. Just the old fashioned way. So you have to take a paper. Um, it's gonna come out. Well, there's a read. There's a. It's gonna have to come out. There's something more to my French time. It's gonna come out of the ground. Um, well, they take readings every month. Well, 26 years. Mm -hmm. Readings on the bottom of the pump. <coughs> one side's us and one side's the village. Yeah. That they, take, they take readings once a month and then they give it to the office. I told you, we talked about it in, in the past is the, the tanks in the ground is going to have to and, and when it does, it may be cheaper for us to buy it to pump, even the town guys. It's no liability. Some, at some point, I probably no liability. They, they figure your, your, your taxes for you. Uh, right? They did all your deductions of your, your off road. And so it may be cheaper in the long run to do that than to buy all the equipment to monitor it and who's what. Yeah, I, I know Stowe was doing that when I retired down there because the, their pumps were right down on the riverbank mm -hmm. here. And uh, so the fire department and the highway were buying that at uh, the Collins Quick Mark there. Yeah. They had a, a deal with them where they had access to the pump 24 7. I think Marshall Fire buys at the pump, don't they? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I've seen the pump up there. Uh, yeah. the pump so, so, how? That makes it sound as though they're getting a much better rate than these guys are getting at the pump. No. 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 Take a, you get your tax money all back. No, take uh, the state of Vermont, Howard Menage, Nick Menage, they buy their fuel there. They don't pay pump price. They pay below that prices on the pump. Oh, yeah. yeah and, and so, so would the town. But what I'm saying, Dolly or whoever it is, right. uh, at their office when it goes to the town, the town credit card. When Kim gets a bill up there, it's not uh, pump price less. It's it's at a the taxes right. back out. Yeah, right, right. It's just at whatever. Yeah, right. there, there's, right. her statement shows what the tax what the tax was, and that is deducted. So if you're paying three dollars a gallon and the taxes are seventy five cents. It, Showing that you paid two, two twenty-five a gallon. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so does it make sense short term to do this? Can we figure out how to do that? Well, do do you do you have to? How, how would you? I don't know how you're going to keep track. Yeah, how would you keep track of it? Unless we took over, unless we took over the village side of the pump. Because right now we have one. The highway has one side of the pump. The village has the other side of the pump. Every month they take readings on the pump. Yeah. To show yeah. how many gallons each yeah. pump, each side yeah. used. And that's how to figure out how much the highway and how much the village. Uses. And there's no way you went your filling a truck to know how much you're putting in? No, you just fill it. Don't worry, you might not get it fixed at some point if you want. Yeah, no, I just right. I don't even think they fix that pump set. You, you, right. Right. Well, you right. no, not it in there. Not in any way. Because if we're going to have to pull those tanks yeah. out, eventually we're going to have to go to the pump anyway. <coughs> you know, for the short term, we're only talking pennies a gallon. Right. Between what you're paying at the pump. You're tying up your money. And what they're paying there. So, for the whole, you know, when you get a load. Just leave it at such. Whether to buy a whole new modern system. 
Oh yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend any money figuring out how to do it. I'm just oh, saying it's there simply because 26, 26. 40 cents a gallon is a that significant difference. But man, if you think it's only going to be four or five hundred bucks, man. You I thought that guy said that tastes good as long as it's not leaking. Pardon me? I thought the guy told us that tastes good as long as it's no water in between the two walls. But I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, this, the tank construction is double wall plastic covered steel. So it's got, when we test in between the bladder, uh, the, between, between the gap there. The wall, yeah. Right? yeah, so I don't know what the. I thought he said, oh, there's never water in there. You're good to go. Well, yeah, that means it's, nothing's leaving and nothing's coming in, right? Right. But when something happens, <laughs> yeah. then it would be, a, you It'll know, pay then it's here. a scramble with a lot of money right. all at once, right? So better to plan it and get yeah. it and figure it out. Okay, yeah, so there doesn't seem to be any simple way to do the to do the to do the game to do the diesel. That's what you're that's what you're all telling me. There's no simple way to do it, so we don't do it. Is that correct? Yeah, but, uh, does it, it's, okay. uh, the chief said he's been in got some on thirty five hundred, so I think there's most like three thousand dollars for fuel, right? $40 difference as well. Less than $300. Right, okay. Okay. How about the rest of it? So I have physicals getting done. Yeah, we, we found out that in order to have a guy do physicals, we have to have them go to the doctor's office. And I'm not going to ask guys to go to the doctor's office and wait half a day or more without getting paid. Especially when I have guys that work off during the day. We, are, we did keep some in there so that new, new candidates that come on, we go to them take a physical to start with. Wait. <laughs> okay. Um, however, we can be liable if one of those guys goes out and works and he has a heart condition, but he hasn't had a physical, so we don't know that, but he has a heart attack, then we're responsible for paying, right? Okay, dokie. I thought this came out two or three years ago that uh, the regulations were that um, they had to have a physical to see if they were comparable to put the air pack. They gave us a. Well, I thought that's what the budget was for. Was the, well, that's what I thought that the increase we started with well, two years ago. Increased that's regulations correct. of some sort. That's okay. correct, but when you you gonna ask, it's hard to ask somebody to take time off half a day from work to go get a physical when they don't get. Well, I understand that, but if it's a regulation. And if it's in the, right if it's, now, right now, Roger, from what I understand from most of the departments in the area, they're not requiring it. I know they're not required it, but the thing that Rhonda passed us out two years ago, that's where this came about to give you that two thousand dollars. And what what I'm what I'm saying is what we want to do is if you come on as a new member, you have to go have a physical before you can join. I understand that, but if it's a regulation like your NPFA and all the other stuff you guys claim you have to do, right? Go by. I mean, if this is in the reg that has to be done, and, and I mean, <laughs> if we're liable for if something happens to somebody, and, right? And he wasn't qualified to. Does Dorfight Park require their guys to take the We I'm haven't given any money for it. Okay. We've been giving I'm you not, two thousand dollars here. We're, we're talking. We're talking about you, and we're talking about your people right now. Man. And first of all, it doesn't need to take a half day to get a physical, okay? You can schedule that far enough ahead and say, I need to be in here at 8 o'clock in the morning first thing. And it's not going to take you more than an hour plus. Okay, so to say they don't have to take a half day off work to get a physical is I'm, I'm not buying that. You can work with the doctors and figure that part out. I think it's it really work important. In Burlington? Well, by God, you can find a doctor in Burlington to do it. Okay, we're asking people to go out and you're asking the town is responsible for liability. We are asking people to go out and do very stressful, dangerous situations and appreciate them willing to do it. And they need, they need to have a physical. 
maybe I'm the only one up here that's crazy and thinks that's so, but for me, like, excuse me, that's a, that's a, that's a I bottom line. The regulation, I forgot it. Yeah. I, I completely agree with you, but I think if we're going to require it, we need to pay them. <laughs> no, we don't. We can pay for the physical. I'm willing to pay if, for that. If, if you if you follow the if you follow the regulation, it's the town's responsibility to pay. If you require, you're going to ask. To you, you're okay, going to okay ask. so if we pay, they all have to get them. Yes. All, all yes. the people that are required to wear air pads. Okay. <laughs> I want everybody that's going out there. I mean, just being in that stressful situation can be enough stress. I mean, I, ha I have always had tremendous respect for folks that do it because you're walking into dangerous, stressful situations, okay? If you're doing that, then it's, to me, it feels like the responsibility of the town is to say, we're going to make sure that you're healthy enough to do that because I don't want somebody going out through there who isn't healthy enough to do it. I don't want them literally putting additional risk on their health factors for them and the well-being of their families because they're trying to do good, but they shouldn't be doing it, and uh, and they haven't gotten the physical, and we should have known about it. So if we have to, it's all right with me. Okay, I'll pay for the time off, but by golly, in the next six months, I want everybody to have a physical. Now, this is what you guys can all disagree with. Say, no, that's not how we're going to do it, Susan. But it's like, excuse me. <laughs> You know, and and enough people with the cost of health insurance these days don't get their regular physicals because they don't have the money and it isn't being covered. Well, that's something we certainly ought to be taking care of. You said that. Well, was in I guess that hit my button. Say, uh, <laughs> in some sort of a handbook or a written policy somewhere. Yeah, there's a there's a regulation OSHA requires for people that wear respirators. So technically, anybody that wears an air pack is supposed to have a yearly physical, and uh, it's just yes, for those who wear air packs. Those that wear air packs. Well, I agree with Susan. We got people out there that could have some sort of a condition, and you guys don't know it. Well, We're they responsible. Don't know. And, and, and I, I, I see what Susan is. Somebody could, could develop a heart murmur or somebody could develop a, a, a plugged artery and stuff and we're asking them to take a, a, a hose or Indian pack and run half a mile up a hill or something. It, it could cause a heart attack. Yep. Not only would the town be liable for it, but it's their lives, their family lives. So. Yeah, yeah. We, but I, I also agree if we require them to have a physical I also say if we require mandatory to have a physical, we, we, we pay an hour. Yeah, okay. Um, for some reason, we have done that in my work, but okay, okay. I'll, we'll pay for the time that they pay for. But well, that's what yeah, that we'll $2,000 in there for. Yeah. Pay for the physical and for the hour off. To have a but give them a couple the of hours. Of the yeah. fire department rate or the, or they're working? Fire department. Fire department. Okay. So the ones with that go through a yearly physical now for the CDLs, you're not going to require them to do it too. I'm just thinking there's no sense the town spending that money like Ryan, myself, anybody that has the CDL license, we go for you know, a yearly C, uh, CDL. Um, well, well, that covers the, the apparatus, I mean the breathing apparatus. Is fine, but in fact, let's go go. It covers dull. your CDL, covers everything. Right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I didn't okay. know. CDL physical is more okay. thorough Even than the regular physical. Okay. Well, you agree well, then. You know, so. We're talking yeah. about air packs. Yeah. The, the regulation. Ain't going to be more different than what. No, for a regular, a thorough CDL. physical take care of. CDL. Is, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what CDL is. Right. We're it's, talking about the, re it's the there. regulation. What's the regulation require for right. self breathing apparatus? Right. Not CDL, but it might be the same thing. I mean, Town's doing that the physical for CDL. The other ones are breathing, they don't care. <laughs> 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 they are. <laughs> yeah, so. so, how do you want to leave this? Well, I think I know in High Park, when I was around, we had one guy that we didn't know even had one lung. Not around anymore, but I'm just 
say it, that you know, it's good to know what's up front anyway. Yeah. 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 So, so then I think what what we need is a is a list of the firefighters when they've had their last physical, and who set up a system for everybody getting physicals. With a with their own personal doctor. Well, that that would be the preference. I mean, you know, because I and and when they may have have had they one, if they don't, don't if yeah. they don't, Absolutely. yeah, if if they don't, well, no. if they don't have a doctor, we'll figure it out for them. And we'll they don't connect them all. Yeah, that's right. I was going to say that's right. We yeah. have some connections that could happen. Well, most um, most patients think, most today, patient. your primary doctor recommends you have. They usually give you a test every like, like, two years. Yeah. Like Depending on what that is, yeah. right, right. I have mine, I think, a year. I think every two years they figure that you should have a physical. Right. Okay, how, how are we going to pay for it if they go to their own doctor? Just get a bill or yeah. whatever uh, bill. Do we, do we need to go through them, excuse my language, all the bullshit of W9s and everything else that certifies that he's a doctor? I think the no. details he's asking about we can lay out for him for the okay. town's interest yeah. i don't want to debate okay, it okay yeah let's not debate this here but we'll work with ron and, and and lay it out figure out how to do it and everybody again depending on if they have their their own insurance or what they have because i'm sure you've got people with all sorts of different situations so let's figure out what they are and get folks on a schedule and so i guess i guess are we going to accept the uh, CDL drivers physicals or well, you, you does that make sense I, I i mean when i go for my physical for my cdl they work over yeah okay <laughs> 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 you can't yeah, imagine okay. it being different okay right right yeah, I don't know what CDL the cdl no. physicals they go more into detail you know like um if you have snoring respirations yeah. that they make okay. go yep. the sleep yep. study and all that a regular physical they don't require they're not going to do that. that right right but do, yeah. do they monitor your year, year? yes they got to be if they're looking for that yes I recall and all that other right right just good regular right. your blood pressure how's everything yeah yeah, yeah. I, I yes. get details yeah yeah we'll, we'll get into but we'll get into the like weeds we yeah. the CDL. yes we can that sounds like it makes sense right no at least it you know, we're saving a little money, you know, because there's no right. sense paying for Ryan's and mine again. Right. You know. Right. Yeah, right. right, right. Well, and to have a second one when you right. already have one. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And there's right. probably more than two of you have a CDL. Yes. Well. yes. Yes, there is. So, what, now, what would this be? A yearly thing, Sue? We have to talk about the well, details. Well, we'll talk about the details. <laughs> but, but you know, it's, it's a. The reason I keep saying that is because it's all new and it's all regulated, and you right. you don't need to be talking what about exactly right. what the town's interests right. are because we don't know that. Right. Okay. Right. Well, we got the idea. Yes, so we, we have the idea. We got it, and we're going to do this, and we're not taking two years to get around to it. Right. Okay. You sell it next week. Taking care of the chairs blood pressure. <laughs> People out there dying. Oh. Thank you. Uh, no, no. Okay. When I see this, that the trucks needs tires, which I'm sure they do because you run them where else, should they be a line set up for, for stuff like that? Uh, they, sort of yeah. Set, don't, don't spike his budget so bad every time. Well, I think because he, because the fire trucks have a regular schedule, even, and you're going to get to those maximums that are set by either the seven or ten, you know that's going to happen, you know, for every tire that you run on the road. So, if they were to take an inventory and you have the two options of saying we know that this amount of value needs to be replaced on a regular schedule, either you put a flat line in your operating budget. Or if things are going to hit like all at once, you would use your fire reserve and build something, mm -hmm. and then right. do all the tires in one year or whatever schedule you want, so that it doesn't it doesn't come up during budget. You know right. it's coming up 
yeah. and it's either being put away on a flat line in the budget, you know, five thousand dollars a year, or you put it away for a big purchase. So there's already money in this fund, right? Mm -hmm. There's not enough for tires. Weren't part of that planning, though. No, but how how much is in that? Well, there's, I think there was enough to cover the request, which is the 5,700, but yeah. there's not enough to do it again next year or the year, you know right. what I mean? Every right. Yeah, so I think just looking at the, the need and trying to put a value on it and then figure out what schedule that's going to hit will tell you whether you can do it every year or whether you should put money in the reserve and pay for it every third year and, you know, do more, more right. once, but we don't know that answer yet. I think you automatically should put some in reserve every year. Yeah. What truck you got coming up that that many years? Are you trying to think? Must be two. Yeah. Retired. Yeah. 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 So you could take care of the immediate need with the reserve, but yeah, start but to put money in the reserve yeah, for a year. Small amount. And, and, and this goes with uh, North High also. We did that. Truck needs tire, we pay for half the Mark French and I talked about highways in the same situation. Yeah. They, 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 they have, same exact yeah. situation. <laughs> My, that's the truth, right? I didn't hear what he said. If North Park, we have to pay for half the tires of North Park. That's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's the idea. Every, we pay half of what right. Eden pays the other. So I think it'd be smart to set up a yeah. replacement. Yeah, one way or the other should be addressed because if you're kidding, what was the graders were what, 12,000 or something, 12 or 15,000 for grader replacement? Oh, yeah. You know, just, and that came as a we cannot get grip on the road anymore. Tires are, we're, the graders sidelined if you don't have good tires on. So those are, and then you would be, you would potentially put an engine out of commission if you got to what 10 years. I just think how much they should be put away. Yeah, it's not. It's it's really just a spreadsheet. Yeah, put a, put a value on it and figure yeah. it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, between the two, between the two departments, you should be putting tires on the truck every year. Ah. Between the two departments, I mean, we got three. We got three trucks, and they got. Oh, a truck. I think yeah. Put it on the truck. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm saying every yeah. year. Between between the two departments, there, there should be a truck that needs tires. Right. I don't know. We never replaced a tire in any of our trucks. We got it. You know, all the time we was put on it. No, it's, it's a year. Yeah, yeah. The is ten years. Yeah, ten, doesn't, they're gone. Doesn't matter whether they got one mile on them, Roger, or a hundred thousand, ten years. If you were to get in an accident, and they look at your tires, and your tires are fifteen years old. You got dates on. Them. You may be in trouble. Yeah. They do. Uh, yeah. Right? I mean, rolling those, they got dates on them, and if you're outside them dates, and what is it, five years? They want you to recap them more. Yeah, I don't know what it is now. Yeah, it's on your wheels. Yeah. yeah, they won't recap them after two years. That's not a bad deal. There's a date right on the tire. Huh. You know, so if you were to get an accident and they're going through your truck, they say, well, that tire is 12 years old. And I wish they put serial numbers on so we could get who lived inside the road up there. <laughs> <laughs> How many up around the Brook Road? They uh, keep piling up. Oh, okay. oh, Barrett Road, too. Yeah. Okay, so, so what? looking at the, going to this page mm -hmm. of their budget, So is the no, we, no, we gotta add truck physical. Well, you shouldn't have to add physical. Oh, it's on that two thousand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because you got two thousand. You should have the two thousand left from yeah. two years ago, and you got two thousand dollars. We put in for this coming budget now. I mean, we're on now, so there's four thousand dollars that should be in that reserve for physicals that didn't get used, shouldn't have got used, right? Because we started this two thousand two years ago. So with the, with this with this budget they're on now, there should be four thousand dollars there available for that. So is it there or did it get spent, moved to other parts of the budget? 
I would assume it got spent because we went on over budget the last two years. You'd have to check with the finance officer to see how she did it. Or okay. Now on, on the truck maintenance, uh, from eight to nine, does that include that tires? No. The, the tires we're asking for out of the. the oh, yeah, out of the reserve fund. Reserve fund. Okay. So I mean, we we could have put it in the budget, but that would have spiked the budget another yep. almost six five, uh, what, fifty. $5,700. So there should be at least $2,000 in this budget they're on now then. Yeah. Correct. That shouldn't have yeah, been spent yet. Right. Where's the line item on that? Um, on your right here, medical physicals. Okay, right there. was an item on it last yeah. year, too, and the year before. Okay, and that's the one we're looking at. Okay, but we're going to discuss that later on, anyways, on the physical and all these. So we should be okay for this year on the tires and stuff if we're going to take it out of reserve, right? Mm -hmm. Then we'll just have to look at the plan for the future. Mm -hmm. It is. Assume with the with the increases in the maintenance that you're looking at here, are you all assuming that that'll be a permanent increase? I mean, just as things are breaking down and it costs more money to do everything, so it's a I mean, it is uh, it's just a regular inflationary thing that's happening. Yeah. Okay. Because we've been going over the last couple years in in uh, maintenance and stuff on equipment and the trucks. Okay. And the insurance you got for twelve hundred that is property insurance? No, that's not liability insurance, sickness insurance. If somebody got hurt they were on works with comp, right? Supplemental, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. all it's twelve hundred a year. Yeah. That's just for that. Oh. The the other insurance for the buildings and stuff aren't in there and isn't in, in that budget. It's in uh, the town that, budget. That also covers we pay an insurance. Uh, mutual aid to members of the mutual aid, right? No, wow, I thought that was it all came under the dues. We might get there. Well, what I oh, you don't have anything in there for that? No, what I've been doing is I, I take that out of the insurance category. That's that's where you get your oh, okay, yeah, and that okay, so it's technically it's insurance. And then the dues comes out of the miscellaneous line. And I see you don't have a line here for uh, for uh, uh, propane. Did you put that under heat uh, for the generator? Uh, I think I took it last year out of gas and oil, and this year we took it out of we're taking it out of miscellaneous. I mean that's not going to be. How's that working, by the way? How much you get? How much propane do you get? With it? You know what I mean? It's not like you're gonna need to fill it up every year. Oh, you run it, run it for hour a week, don't you? Huh? Don't run it hour a week? Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Twenty at the time. No. But but our issue here, okay, is that we're looking at this is a permanent increase in the fire budget. Plus, not taken into account is the so rounded up to five thousand dollars a year for tires, mm -hmm. which sounds like it's going to should should be an ongoing every yearly sort of thing. It needs to come from somewhere. Okay. Oh, 
question for you. What's that right? Probably a month, month and a half ago, I saw the, I can't think of the name of that, commercial radio truck sitting on the yard for two days. Do you have two days of radio work or repairs? We put some new equipment in one of the trucks. And that, that was part of the, the uh, what they were doing. But he was there for one day and then they didn't have all the parts, so they had to come back. Okay. You would have finished it that one day if you had they ordered all the parts that they were going to. That was at $5,800 that we had to get, that uh, we signed off on. How much? $5,800. $5,800. Okay. Got any more questions for the Edge Fire Department? Know what we want to do? We just, there's numbers. We just got to figure out where to get money. Okay. Anything so, else that must a whole complete week? radio or something for $5,800. Was that for one truck? Yes. So you put new radios in? New new uh, uh, new headsets for us. Oh, new headsets. Yeah. Okay. New headsets in the truck, not right. in the helmets. No, right. They're in the truck. Okay. And so if you pump in there. Yeah. So while they're that pumping, they can talk. And it also allows, it also allows you to get out of the truck, and if you're within a certain distance from the truck, you can still use the oh, use the headset to talk to yep. us. So, like, if you're backing up a long road or whatever, the guy that's spotting you can talk to you directly yep. on the on the headset without having to push a button or anything. Uh, the other thing it's done, it, it's for, is so that they can hear. Like the guys in the back seat, you can't always hear what's going over the radio that's located up in front. Uh, not only that, but it's it's ear protection. Yeah. Um, so that because of the noise that's up here in the trucks. Yeah, well, that's Those days are gone. Yeah. <laughs> if we got more questions for Ed, we're good. We just mm -hmm. got to home. Start the printing presses, right? Okay. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you too, Brian. Yep. Thank you. So we'll just get out the printing presses. <laughs> we should start buying lottery tickets for the town. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're the best one. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to I had a friend in the legislature who said lottery tickets are for people that are mathematically challenged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the Guion Valley got to sit through all the exciting fun things. Wow. I learned so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feeling like I should rejoin and the past squad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all there. I'm feeling bad. Yeah, you live, you live right now by Park there. You I take have this pager in my pocket. You take that in up there. How's Dale doing? I'm doing well. Good looking nice there for a minute. So here we are, feeling really bad <laughs> to make you look yep. at more paper oh, no. that has more figures on it that's asking for money. But it's less than last year. Well, we get the printer. Right. 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 Yeah, as long as the printer is out there. <laughs> so uh, we were asked to put together a budget, which we don't know how to do, because um, we didn't really have one last year. And I think we've only been an official committee for a week and a couple of hours. But we've been very busy. So we kept a lot of notes, and we put them on a piece of paper for you tonight uh, in lieu of a more official budget. So yep. we'll, no, we'll, sort of, yes. we'll, we'll start this somewhere. Yeah, no, this is fine. So how are things going up there? Well, we think swimmingly. <laughs> right? 
we've got work to do. The roof was finished right before the giant Halloween storm, so that was great. That was good. Didn't leak? Did not leak. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> we just had our event for the wreath lighting ceremony. Okay. We teamed up with the community circle. Right. And how did that go? It exceeded my expectations. I thought it would be a success if just our committee showed up and we had about 25 people. Oh, excellent. Okay. Two, two events so far this year, significant repairs with the roof, lots of ideas for what we want to do next and try to curate the most important things for the coming fiscal year to see what we might get the okay for. Okay, when you, if you, you get all of this done, um, What will that allow you, and how much use will that allow you in the building? I think the biggest priority right now is that we're thinking about things that can help insulate the first floor so that we can start doing events year round. Because mm -hmm. yeah. that's the biggest barrier right now, is half the year we can't even go in there, can't move the water on, can't do much of anything. So if we can insulate the first floor, fix up the windows, fix up the doors, and that's also for security reasons, because as we start doing more there, and storing more things in the building, we want to make sure it's safe. Um, it'll double our capacity for what we can do over there. And I think once we have that in place, in addition to some of our own community events, we can also look into starting to rent out the space, which can be a revenue stream. Mm -hmm. We've had a few inquiries already this year about people wanting to rent out the building. We've had to tell them, you know, we're just not ready for that. Yet. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah. I guess my question would be on the quotes here. So don't we run into the problem that we ran into in the roof. Anything that we do in there, you guys do in there, I mean, this is a firm <coughs> quote. I mean, you know, anything foreseen that something else might happen while we're getting the windows replaced or anything like the roof ran over, right. quite well, a bit of money. Window World did a quote. They came up and looked at the building and there are 11 of the largest windows there, so they gave us a per window quote, and it totaled $6,300 for all of the big windows. And that was an installed quote, and to take away the old ones. Mm -hmm. And they would have screens, and the grill things that make it look just like the windows that are there. So they're energy efficient windows. I mean, my only expertise is having had my own windows redone this year, but the problem that we ran into the roof is that it, we couldn't see until we got the old roof off the extent of the board rottage, and that was where the old bridge came from, and I don't think you run into something similar with the window. The windows. So, that's good. Well, you could if the window sills were rotted. I mean, they came up and, ins they came up and inspected yeah, that's what they came up and looked they at came there and they would know if they were. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. That's the value of having had them up there to look at it. Okay. And Window World was not asked to quote prices on the doors. The double doors that are on the front of the building are solid wood and fairly secure, but there is a door on the fire escape that isn't terribly secure. So that was the $300 estimate there to uh, replace just that one. Mm -hmm. And the quote for each of the big windows was in the neighborhood of 400 and something dollars. So we figured $400 for the smaller four windows that are on the stage area to get them all done at once. Yeah, are you saying there's no self-service in North Hyde Park or no self-service at the uh, no. If you, if you drive through North High Park, I guarantee you on any given day as you pass back and forth, David, you will see people pulled off in the pull-off by Ken Dusos. Yeah. Because you drop it right there. 
then you pick it up again That's once you've crested the hill past my house and hit past the fire station because yeah. you're picking up the Eden Tower. But North High Park itself is deader than a freaking doornail. So you'd like to think that your cell phone could catch some tower if you called 911, but I can't text home to say, hey, bring down an extension cord while we're sitting there in that hall. Yeah, at t um, you can't, but I think uh, Verizon you Verizon can. you could. So if you were in the building with your at t cell phone and you called 911, it should pick up a Verizon tower and progress the call. I mean, that's the way it's supposed, it's supposed to work. To work. But, then get but, ask this to bring it, but what we're hoping to do, though, is if we were to have whatever it might be, a small church service, a music thing, somebody wants to use the place for a wedding reception, they don't have any way they can even call the babysitter. You know, the babysitter can't reach them. And then we were looking ahead to things which we tested with the musicians that we had there. What if we wanted to do movie night? You know, what if you needed access in some way to, to Wi-Fi? So this seemed to be the cheapest way to consider it. You certainly could put in a basic telephone service, but for about the same money, you could put in a Wi-Fi package, and then you would be able to offer internet service if somebody did need uh, that. Yeah. We would certainly expand the type of programming we could do there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you could do presentations. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you guys put in for any grants yet? We put in for the one that's listed there, Roger, but it I doesn't mean. include the building. That one was for uh, safety. So, so you know, we're, we're new enough to this, but we have the list of available grants, and uh, some of them we do qualify for. Yes, actually there is one, and the deadline is a little tight for this year, but it's really a perfect fit. Um, so Ron's been forwarding the information, and this one's from the Preservation Trust of Vermont, and it's one-to-one -one matching up to 10,000. And the hope is that we can submit this, the letter of intent is due January 15th. And it's specifically for building repair, like windows is one of the items listed. So our best hope would be we submit this grant for, with our window world bid, and then we would have the money from the town and from the grant to replace the first and second floor windows. But we have to apply as a 501c3 for that. So it's, we're a little tight on the clock, but the amount of the 501c3 application is $1 more than the donations we received this year. So we're thinking about maybe- Can you scrape together that $1? $1. $1. $1. $1. So we are planning to file as a 501c3 right. just for fundraising purposes yeah. and grants. Yeah. Uh, really, any of any of anything those grants. that you want to do. So really so th th yeah. This will go on the tailing board. That's, that's, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, this would definitely, just like we did last year. Right. And that's the reason that right. you know, I, I bolded it and I put it exactly the words that were in the town report right. last year with the right. parentheses around where it was coming from. So this we, will go in as an article. Right, yes. I mean, that, that's yes. what we, we copied right. last okay. year's. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It was a starting point. But without a doubt, if we were lucky enough to be the grant recipients of any dollar figure, right. it would, you know, we wouldn't come asking for every dime off of this page. I guess the only other thing to be is that I would recommend that there be somebody there to see what's going on. I think that uh, roof, there wasn't enough supervision on it. You know, my experience being in the trades and stuff, I just think that the roof was assessed more than what it should have been the contractor did. So my recommendation would be that somebody would look over this when this, this work is being done if they think I would like to have put in the article that it's overseen by somebody that are there on the job seeing when the work is being done if this thing passes. You volunteer for that? Yeah, I'll volunteer for it. I'll volunteer just to oversee the work. Yeah, I'm not gonna right. get involved with the right. finances or nothing. No, but, no, right, right, but to oversee but I, it, right? I would go down right. and 
Oh, we see it, yes. I second that. Oh, okay. We would welcome. Yeah. We would welcome yeah. your expertise. You know. know where the water is. Yes. You know. <laughs> yeah. 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 We right? know where that is. You know. <laughs> you know. You know where the water is. You're familiar yeah. with the area. No, I, I, that's the only thing I would recommend. I'd oversee it, but I don't want to get involved with the money and the, right, right, right. the contracting right. and everything out. But to great. see that. To, That'd be terrific. You know, I just feel that on the roof that somebody would have been there, we could have probably saved some money. I was hoping you weren't going to say one of us should have been up there on the roof. <laughs> no, I, 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 <laughs> that's oversight in a, in a way I that none of us. The <laughs> amount of extra material the guy used and yeah. his labor, I think, was a little out of proportion, but that's done and over with. That's right. So we got to move on. And it doesn't leak. We proved it. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah I, will, I would oversee it when, you know, yeah. if this thing goes through the windows and stuff, I'd be really glad to be there to on be the there. job when that's the windows awesome. are being put in. Thank you so much. Thank that's, you. Uh, that's huge. Like I said, I don't want to go to the meetings. I don't want to. <laughs> no, I'll get out of the meetings. I think you ought it's to be. It's chilly. It's board. really chilly in no, there. No, I don't want to get out of the I've been thinking about coming to the board. But you're very welcome anytime. Yep. We did have room for three, three more members to join the committee. There you go, Roger. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm getting out of the house. When someone can even walk. Okay. There's another That's great. Here. When you do get your non-profit status established, I'll give you a business card. I'm the one that did the work. Yes. In the, yeah. The the, the, the reinforcement of the end. Yeah. Stuff like that and yeah. Your, uh, your crew will help us. Yeah. yeah. We can be happy to. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's great, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Between him and I, we, we should be able to. We can't do fundraisers. We've already tackled a lot of But I also would like to see where some of the fundraising is going to start. You know, the people are gonna, you know, and do it in to start doing something. Pieces. Like what? Besides grants, as All far as like asking. Well, maybe maybe yeah. you, you could put on a dinner. Oh, oh for sure. Yeah. Yeah. With, yeah, sure. We can hardly wait. Boy, you need to be able to wash the dishes. Well, no, but you could probably find a place to do it. Maybe at the elementary school to start oh, fundraising now. Yes, yes, yes. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, people that. All right. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. Know. They got. Yeah, Roger volunteered for that. No, one. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know Roger can make a mean set of sandwiches. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it says right here, Dale, you've got a donation of a commercial range, so you're all set. We, yeah, except we. And one of you girls can play the piano and sing. There you go. No, stay to wait till everything's all set. I up. see what you mean. Yes. Okay, okay. You, you could go. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you probably could use the gym and the cafeteria in the elementary school. I'm not, I don't know. Or the fire station. Or the fire, or the fire station. station. We, we know who to ask up at the fire well, station. Well, the only thing the fire station you have to do in the summer. Right. Well, and, you know, and we more have people have more time to do something right. in the cold weather than you do yeah. in the summer. I mean, I, I'm sure that probably, you know, you could use the gym or the cafeteria in the elementary school. I'm not sure. We used to be able to. Oh, I, I don't doubt it for a second. You know, each one of us has a different thing. You know, but we don't have to show that things. you're you're starting instead exactly. of waiting until all this stuff is done. Because if it doesn't pass, you know, then you've got to figure out what you're going to do. I mean, we were thinking about programming for this year. Our sort of rough goal was if we could do one event per quarter. The chicken pie yeah. thing would be very expensive to do. I tell you right now, I'll get hold of stuff. Get, get oh, to a fish, fish fry, fry right? Because yeah. he was doing it at uh, River Arts there for a while. Right. Because right. if there's more, there's more room to do it at the school than there is in the fire station. Oh, yeah. And the school's definitely there. Well, you right. know, we, without a doubt, have come up with so many ideas about what to do at the building. I hear what you're saying about perhaps doing something. To get something started. Like I mean, to show the people you have the interest you're going to do it. Right. What, right. Would the, what would the recipient be of the proceeds from this event? So we can think about that, but but we'll we'll use the building in the summer without heat to do things, and people will come. Right. We've proved right. that twice. Yeah, just I mean, by throwing together something, and uh, we've done other things in that building in the past that brought in. Time. But you got to generate some money, yes. yeah, absolutely. because that's what we were told that it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Takes you know. a couple of years. Yeah. We're getting. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. It takes a couple of years to get building. <laughs> Come a long way in a short time period. Exactly, yeah. and been you know that yeah. every you know person that. who crossed the threshold had something nice to say yeah. about how nice the building looked. Gee, it didn't. There was a lot of good comments. I went through. Right, it was you, a lot you were of good there for the whole time. 
But yeah. even even the people who came in the cold a couple of weeks ago, you know, just the pictures of cold outside with the warm light of inside, and they came in and we had hot drinks for them. They're like, oh, we had no idea it was this nice in here. Right, so, uh, that when you did the lighting? Yes, yeah. exactly. See, I didn't know, didn't even know anything that was going on up there. That I knew it was going to be done in high power, it was supposed to be, but. Right, they moved it up to us. And but nobody knew about it. Yeah, I don't know how the publicity went for that, but. You know, not everybody looks at the front porch floor, and I don't, I don't have, you know, that. But we have a lot of this thing in News and Citizen. This takes a while. I don't read the right. paper it's anymore, okay. because I have had time reading the print. Okay. Well, we'll call, we'll call you next time. Call, I'm a, I'm a I just can't, you know, it's hard to, so I don't need to bother reading. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll go. We're good? We got this? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So is it okay the way it's going to, like, we gave you enough stuff for something yeah. to go in? Yeah, in the morning, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Well, no, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Two. All right. Take care of the name of the country. All right. Here's a three. <laughs> um. Is, is it rude if we leave? Oh, no. 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 Okay. Oh, it's up to your, your no. choice. We can't no. figure out how we can leave or we can go. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be out the door with that. Yeah. You'd be like, go oh, ahead with it. Thank you. So, uh, definitely. I'm sure Ron would like. Hey, Dale. He'd get all yes. the way there. Just like you folks, we do take donations at the door. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you want? Pen? Water? <laughs> I got a really good hat and gloves here. Thank you, folks. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, I asked. Ron to put this on here. I've had uh, about developing a fireworks policy for the, for the town. And what I'd like to do is just get a group of folks together to talk about it and come up with a, with a resolution. And uh, absolutely have Judy Lamphere is one of those. I've had a couple of conversations with the Lamphere's and I think they're Everybody was here, remember, years and years ago when one early morning the cows were going across the road and the truck came over there and drove Oh, them. yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember that. Yeah. And, uh... Well, that had nothing to do with fireworks. No, well, let me... Could you let me finish, please? <laughs> but just remember what a what a mess that was, and that was a lot of years ago, and they then had about 25 cows instead of hundreds of cows. Uh, the issue with now, if you think about this, and, and when those fireworks went off, and when those cows, and again, you're not talking about 25, you're talking about maybe 150 cows start going through fences. If they've gone through a fence and been going down that road full speed in the dark, somebody could have gotten killed. I mean, we're just, we're in a situation that is, uh, they got some really valid points. We really need to think about the whole safety issue there that is just very different than it was in the past. Because um, I, I, I feel bad if something like that happens. Um, and I just, just to get some people together and sit down and talk about it, say what are the options, what do we want to do? The I don't, be, I'm going to give my honest opinion. Yeah. The Joneses ever call about fireworks? They haven't they had have, any up there. They what? They haven't been big displays up there. See, when it's, or, a, when it's a few, have, it's fine. do they have them? They did, did it was it the DFW? No, no, it was oh, home day. Lamar Union on home day. Yeah. They did a gigantic display. Yeah. yeah. And one of the neighbors, uh Dom Pierre or something like that, yearly don't they have a Cross the road, yeah. Have a yearly display. That was down at the uh campground. Well they had it at the campground. I knew they had them at the campground. Oh what are you talking about? The year they had them at the Well they had down but just this past year was uh, No, I have them been on the board both times at yeah. the Shit, it's fame there. And the first time, Lane Pierce was upset because they 
was not told about the fireworks right. because he'd come in, or they came and told us if we known we could either put the cows out or put the cows in. I don't know which one. That's which right. one. That's right. And, and there'd be no problem. So, Thanks, so if, if if and I can see where Lanford's coming from, but one person having a farm or business and stuff should that stop. 10,000 people that graduated from Moyne Union High School to, to uh, curb their livelihood? Or? Well, it's I can not, see, I can it's see not both sides. That's why I'm saying that you know, should, we should get yeah. a group of people together and say, what do they want to recommend? And they may, may, may well recommend that we put something out at the, on the at town meeting and let the town decide what they want to do. But I mean, I think it's because this, the situation has changed. Again, it's not like it's 20 cows anymore. It's a lot of, it's gone from, you know, the few fireworks, they, they said that, you know, that's fine. That doesn't totally, you know, a thunderstorm there, you know, they're okay, but it's these gigantic, again, it's just fireworks have, have totally changed over the years and having them right there. The Joneses, it's not happening near the Joneses. It's like, if we want to do that sort of thing in Hyde Park, is there a different place that is safer to do it? It's like doing it over in Morrisville at the school is like, there aren't any, there aren't any farms around there, you know, so it, it's the whole, it, I, I just think it's a legitimate uh, concern if, uh, if, if there were suddenly, again, I remember that was, you couldn't have been, that was a long time ago that that happened with the, that morning when the, when yeah, the truck came, well, yeah, when they used to take the cows across the road. And it was foggy. And, right, it was foggy morning and the truck came over the hill fast and was, it, it, yeah. That was bad. Um, you know, but now you think there's so much more traffic on that and people drive that road so fast and we're in the middle of the night because we're talking fireworks so it would be dark. Man, you get the potential for something really bad happening there. So yeah. to come up with how do we do it and then what's their responsibility, what's the responsibility if you're going to do something like that oh, yeah. so they know where to, where to, where to put them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if one of them said if, if they knew ahead of time There'd be no problem because they can put them in and take them in. I don't know which one, but one or the other. They leave them in. Yeah. Well, that's part of that again, and that's when they were talking about smaller quantities of cows. Now, when you're talking about 350, 400 here, the whole situation is just different. And I, and I mean, and I, any large business in town that had a big concern, I think we would respond the same way. Uh, uh, a significant business in town deserves a conversation about here's what's happening to be able to with a group of folks from Hyde Park put everything on the table if they can come up with some ideas and say okay let's take it to the town and see what the town wants. So well, what happens you said Chris Dompierre is that the name yeah. you said that had the fireworks now that's right next door to us. Yeah. 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 yeah 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 has them every year yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so so is the Mother Union right next to us. Imagine they look at the wall of Howard's office, homecoming. And and it was it was a lot bigger than the Don Pierce thing. It was they did a, they, they did a big outside group came in, did a gigantic yeah, I know. Door, more still, right? Well, yeah, you're right there. I think you should come up with something. I, I don't think you have to say down high park you're going to have fireworks, but you could come up with so many square miles. My own, yeah, just, my own just come up with something. Yeah. But anyway, what, yeah. I, what I'm just looking burn. to do is to say, <laughs> I would say you work with the fire warrant on that. Let's get, I'm just asking, say, yeah. how about, let's get a group together, let's sit down and say, okay, we're looking, we're looking for some suggestions mm -hmm. and some recommendations. Maybe get a couple of select board on it yeah. and um, with the town fire warrant, which they have to get a permit to have that, which would be with Ron. Uh, Chief Webster, yeah. Chief yeah. Webster. But the permit really is just a notification. It is I know, but to come up with an yeah. idea how we do it. Yeah. But you're right. That it would be up to this to be yeah. to warn the neighbors yep. that this to is going to happen. Know, what's happening. Or notice the paper, there's an ejection to have a meeting. I, I, I would like to go back to what Dave said. And somebody should talk to Russ or Kirk or whatever and see before you have start having a meeting if we let them know or the they Whoever are. lets them know if they can keep the cows in, like you said, would that be a big factor, or that would be okay, or what? What that would be? I agree. I've had those conversations. So what was the outcome? They don't, they don't want any. Okay, they don't think it can be controlled. Okay, they well, but they're you know, but they were still really upset, and they had some couple of cows seriously injured, and they you know, 
So, so they were in that. So that's one thing. Let's get yeah. no, people I, together and talk about it. Just to know, know maybe right. we could, you know. Well, and, 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 and they may now, with enough planning and saying, if this is what everybody agrees is the right thing to do, then they can figure out how to do it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Exactly what happened. It had nothing to do with the firework. It had to do with them crossing the, the road with the cows when that all happened. Well, that was right. Previously. Yeah, way back. That's right. right. But didn't that happen up there twice? No, but no, no. The fireworks said you only got. No, no. no but no, the no, cows no. getting hit twice. Wasn't there two episodes? I don't remember one. one. I remember. I don't remember. Yeah, one. I think there was two episodes up there. Because I think Brenda yeah. Cook brought stoked the brush of sand in the road. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll, we'll get a group and I'll check and we'll send you an email and see who wants to. And I think you're right, get the fire department and everybody. And and maybe someone outside the, you know, maybe the office. Maybe like the school wanted to do it as well. Well, somebody like Brian outside, would you be addressing getting on that? Maybe sure. Try to work out something that would you know. Yeah, see what we can do. Yeah, just throwing it out there. Okay, I'll, I'll take that and I'll let you know who I Oh, I round up to go into this one. Phew. Okay, annual contract cloud. Let's manage the clouds. Yeah, this is we last year. You'll remember we had a pretty long discussion about upgrading our internet security and making sure all software is current, as well as the cloud backup system for redundancy. Uh, this week we're getting the new server finished and get that upgraded because it was out of date. It had some. Uh, some some risks that we needed to fix from hardware to software and Kim's getting her new land recording system in so there's a whole bunch of IT stuff going in this this week one of the things that does run out is the um, annual contract with tech group to manage all that stuff which is really looking at software programs and making sure that it's current updated safe and all that so nothing new, just a renewal of the existing contract for 2020, which uh, Kim has signed in the past. So uh, she'll make sure there's money in the budget. There's no big changes to the cost of that. So uh, if the board's agreeable to continuing that, I think we, we do get weekly and monthly reports from Tech Group and uh, we haven't been <laughs> issued any notices from Russia for $50 million to release our data, our which, data. Right. which you'll hear bad reports on in New Orleans got hit over the weekend. Again. Um, so there's, there's definitely people poking all the time that we have to sort of stay one step above, ahead of them, I guess is a good way to look at it. But it is at a cost, which... It is at a cost, but it's pretty much 100%. They oh, it, for safety and security, it is that they would really have to spend a lot of time and resources to get through what we have. They're going to go to the weaker spots. So if you're not in the good position, uh, you're, you'll be at more risk. So we think we're in a good position now. And we do have the outside consultants that are monitoring it. So the alternative is to hire IT staff, basically, and we're not anywhere near that level at this point in Hyde Park. But at some point, we should be looking at all the other uh, locations too which we do not have direct connection to but those folks if we ever wanted to we could look at the library the same way the highway or fire department to make sure that they're not a risk to the town system so our town system right now is detached from those other locations except for the email which is the only way we communicate with them so that is somewhat of a risk if somebody were to and I've been spoofed with you know, email coming to Allison with my name on it. And it was just click this link from Ron. And she was aware enough to call me and say, you didn't just send me that weird message. I said, no, I didn't have anything to do with that. So they are trying, it doesn't happen a lot, but. Yeah, we had, we had happened twice in field days. Yep. They used mine, mine as being the president and uh, I authorized $7,500. Yeah, so there's Gregor, you know, do I need to have emails? So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so automatically, no, that's security, right? There. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have emails, so she, uh, she said, you know, she didn't do nothing about it, you know? I don't think so. <laughs> 
But it did happen to us a field day a couple times. Yeah. So the, the motion would be that the select board authorizes the town clerk to sign the new contracts for cloud services and managed manage services, which is the security part. And how much? Uh, I was trying to look for that new number from last year. I didn't yeah, have that. Fifty-eight, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah I'm gonna, I got it here. Just gonna take me a second to see that. And that was a transfer of seventy-five hundred dollars to this account. Yeah. That I authorized it. It's a long we got contract. We got something like that the other day. So it was just there as a friend and they wanted bills to do something for them. Well, I knew immediately that there were no bill can't do anything for anybody. So I went, oh, okay, what's happening here? Yeah, so the cloud system is 200 a month and the uh, managed services is... Uh, 216 a month. Sorry, I'm 6,000. Yeah. 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 Worth it. Yeah, I think you're in 58. That was pretty good. That's a year. Yeah. Yeah, it's a year. So, so the other Everybody. side, the other side piece to that is Nemrec, which is our software people for payroll and accounts payable and all that other business and the monthly report that you have down here. Uh, they were being uh, challenged, I guess, by the state of Vermont because they were providing the assessment software to the state of Vermont for grand list information and the state went out to bid to see what other vendors could provide a current level of service, which meant that the software providers had to have certain security protocol within the software and the state of Vermont is upgrading theirs too and Nemrec was potentially not going to be able to meet the new state standards and I think they might have lost that contract which was large so we got a letter from Nembrick saying by the way your $1,500 a month uh, fee for all your nice uh, software packages is going to 5000 so that was an increase you'll see in the as an annual cost increase too which we can't really get out of because that is something we would have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to replace if we had to go out to the private market and try to find other comparable systems for account management. So they still are the best deal, but it's it, um, it more than doubled this year due to the market forces of Nemrick needing to make some adjustments to survive. Um, I don't know what other towns are doing with that, but it was a blanket letter to you know, over 200 towns. Jeez. So. Towns get right there today. Yeah, so everybody was having a pretty good deal with them, though. They had, you know, 24 seven, you know, basic service and yeah. response yeah. to there, and they just can't continue to operate at a at a good rate because of other issues that are going on. Okay, so I need a motion. So moved. Need a second. Second. Okay. Any joys? Okay, exactly. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. Anybody abstaining? Okay. Town listers got any errors or omissions? Uh, no, they actually modified that and gave me a certification of no appeal or suit pending on the grand list. So if you disagreed with your assessment you could file a right. complaint and go through the board of uh, uh, board of civil authority for an MPL and right. go to the state and all that stuff so anytime after February of the following year we have to do this document which says that the prior year which is 2018 grand list is not involved with a suit so we know it's final Okay. So that's all that we're telling the state is that the grand list is final yep. at uh, 2018. Okay. Oh, he came in. Yeah. 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 Hello. Did, yeah did, Joey came in. Did you establish that was uh, Tom and property? Uh, more. It's uh, more in property across the road. No, you said the last time. The, the tax map was wrong. Oh. Okay. So it had 
Julie had to correct the tax map to show there was a people on the other side of the road, the Morin family. Yeah, the one there. Yeah, not the Joey Road. So that's all corrected now. Yeah, little know. little deed research. No, I a lot of figure is probably probably knew what he was talking about because he way property line was. Okay. Um, get that sign. Reviewing the minutes. Back. The one you got. Totally one day agenda, right? One day agenda. But is it the one that you went off for me? No. <laughs> oh, I didn't look up there. Sorry. Well, no, I had what he gave me the other day. They're being bad down there. I did. I didn't look up there. I need to see who put this here. No. Not get up on me. Started off at like ten. We got it down to two. Three. Two or three. 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 Yeah. It was ten five zero three. Yeah. I need them though. I don't have it, I don't think. December 3rd. I get from I can get from Griswold, one, Scott. Oh, so this, the this, was, didn't make it. this was that one? communication budget. Okay. Yeah, you went to that one. I don't care. Okay, okay. We know, we know. Okay. I got that. <laughs> Motion to accept the minutes for November 18th. It's on the way home. Oh, yeah, sure. Right, right. I make the motion to. And the third. So you need to second. second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? We get Rolling back. or abstain we get from the We'll see my head down that pack on second. Yeah. And yeah. making the motion. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. 
there's that one here. The, 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 no. Boy, I had some calls up three, I think. Who in the world in their right mind is paving at 16 degrees below zero? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, I can't find a ball out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a minute. <clears throat> yeah, but it, it's it pretty good, though. Oh, I thought it was better than what it was. Well, let's see if there, let's see if yeah, I didn't get any email on that. Yeah, that's good. We know it's not maybe don't show. There's a play there, it'll show. Yeah. We don't have to sign the Yeah, well we'll send it down this way. Don't have to sign that. Then send that back out. I have to sign it. Yeah, yeah, okay.
That's just a research. That's a research. Research, okay. I don't have to sign anything. Research, okay. Okay. For 40 hours. Yeah. For 40 yeah. hours. Right, okay. Get Rhonda. Yeah. Work that up. What else? I forgot. That's it. I had two quick announcements. Oh. The uh, planning grant was approved with the town of Eden in Waterville to study how to work with villages that have state highways mm -hmm. through them. So each of those places has a state highway going through their village and each one's trying to do something like the Grange. Mm -hmm. So Seth Jensen from Regional Planning is going to lead that project. That'll be 18 months, 24 month long project working with the three towns. And then today we received a letter from <coughs> Wayne Russin. I think he's up in Underhill looking to see if you wanted to sell the Gamble property up in Northside Park. We haven't had any discussion about what to do with that one acre piece next to Larry DeMar. So this is just a, he wanted me to get the letter to you to see if, you, if we were ready to sell. I said, we haven't talked about anything to sell up there. <coughs> so, but he said, well, if you're ever interested in selling, give me a call. And I said, well, send a letter. <laughs> Half of it's probably mapped as floodplain, so you need to do a survey to see what the real <laughs> elevation need, is. Uh, if you want water, you'll need uh, about $1,500 up front. Well, the disposition yeah. of a town asset is a bigger discussion than yeah. no, I'm just saying. responding to the first person. So a lot of that stuff would have to be worked out, but um, we haven't talked about anything to do with that. Because so. lawyers are nothing, never talking about, you know, if anybody holds anything up there. Well, yeah. uh, probably. Why should we sell it? <coughs> no, we had. I think you want to look at, look ahead to the town plan up there. You yeah. Know, you want the town plan to be. Yeah, to uh, get it for nothing. Yeah, but you want the town plan to be uh, campers up through there or, or businesses. Fishing there. access, business. Yeah. yeah. And, that's, and Roger's been attending the tax sale things. Yeah. And I think there's a two maybe that might come to okay, the town. The next time the tax sale comes up. We need to have a meeting to decide how high I can bid on that Grange Hall down on, on the Maggie Stewart's place. Yeah. And plus the one next to the post office. Maggie Stewart's place? Well, the old, place. The old Stewart place. Oh, okay. The old hotel. She holds the mortgage on it. Okay, okay. Because I could have bought those two places at the tax bill for, I don't know, three or four thousand dollars. Oh, wow. I don't know. You know. Well, I don't know how high the guy would have bid it. But I needed, you know, I yeah. couldn't, uh, I couldn't do it on my own because I didn't feel. You could pull that out of your pocket. <laughs> yeah, but the guy would have been higher. I needed to know yeah, how high I'd go. Yeah, how high to go, right. right. But whatever comes up to you, we need yeah. to, okay. to meet and see what you guys want to do. Yeah, especially right in the middle. 
Uh, yeah. Especially right in Bill. Oh, Ron, I think that gamble place was the first time we ever worked together. Going through the weeds looking for that pole. Did you go to right. the state? The corner? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was that was, that that was really quick. Three. That was 2012. Yeah. yeah, I think so. We finally closed it in 13. Yeah. yeah. Now the Japanese knotweed is taking over. It's pretty nasty in the summer, I guess. Okay. All right. Anything yeah. else? So That's it for me. Look different. Brown No, we just need. No, we got. We got to meet January 6th. Yeah. Right. Got January 6th. That's six o'clock. Right. Right. North idea. Yeah. Well, everybody have a good Christmas. Yeah, yeah. we have to sneak in something quick before we can do it. About the 18th, what do we do?